Okay, in the last time, start by reading the problem first to figure out which two of the start, elapse, and end times you're given and which one you're solving for. Joey finished his chores at 4.30. He spent 45 minutes cleaning up his room and 15 minutes doing dishes. What time did Joey start his chores? So if he finished at 4.30, finish gives me a clue that that's his end time. So I know I've already used this one. He spent 45 minutes cleaning his room and 15 minutes doing dishes. Well, those two times give me a clue that that's going to be his elapsed time. One way is to add those two times together to figure out how many hours and minutes, or you could just start with your timeline and start putting on the 45 minutes and 15. I personally like to put the two times together because that makes sense to me. Some students might like to keep them broken up. So if I take my 45 minutes plus the 15 minutes, 5 and 5, 3 and 1, 4 is 5, 60 minutes. Well, I know 60 minutes is an hour, so the elapsed time in this case is one hour. And it says, what time did Joey start his chores? Well, start gives me a clue that I'm trying to figure out the start time. So in this case, since I'm trying to figure out the start time when given the end and elapsed, I begin at the end of the timeline and work my way backwards. So the end time is 4.30. And if you can either break it into half hours, maybe you want to go from 4.30 minus 30 minutes, since that's half of an hour and it's 30 minutes here, if I minus 30 minutes from 4.30, it becomes 4 o'clock. And then I still have 30 minutes left to take off. 4 o'clock minus 30 minutes would be 3.30 for my start time. The other way you could have done it as well, 4.30 minus 1 hour is going to be 3.30. So then you know your end time is 3.30 because you worked backwards on the timeline. 